Hi Year 12, so we're going to look at finding the range and interquartile range from grouped data. Okay, so this time we have a bit of a problem if we look at this table here. Um, we've got various values for our mass. We don't have a single value to type in as our data in our calculator. So what we do is we represent each group with its midpoint when we're using the um, when we're using the calculator. Okay, so I've worked out the midpoints and a few other things. Okay, um, so, and I've typed these midpoints into my data list on my calculator and I've typed in the frequencies as well. Okay, all right, and then we can press calc and set and just check. Yep, my data is in list one, my frequencies are in list two, that's fine, and one var, and we've got the mean and so on. Let's scroll down. Now we can see there's a bit of a problem because we've got the minimum is 43 because of course the calculator thinks the actual data are the midpoints um, and that's fine when we're estimating the mean okay but it is not fine when we're doing medians, quartiles, percentiles and so on. For that the assumption that we make is not that every data point is equal to the midpoint it is that every um, all of the data are spread uniformly within each group. So they're evenly spread on their histogram bars. Now that assumption still holds if you use the midpoints for the means uh, because of the symmetry. Okay, But basically we assume that all the data are uniformly distributed within each group. So our calculator doesn't help us here. Let's instead have a little look at doing it by hand. So the range is a nice easy thing. So if we want the maximum minus the minimum, well, the, we don't know the exact ones, but we can estimate them for a group by taking the maximum possible allowable value. So that's 65.5, not 65. And take away from that the smallest possible value. Okay. So that means that we get an estimate of 25 for our range. If we want the interquartile range, we need to do the upper quartile. OK, so that's the third quartile minus the first quartile. OK, and the first quartile is a quarter of the way through the um, through the data. OK, so let's just have a go at that. So if we've got 50 data, data points, then we want to find a quarter of 50. For a list of data or a small amount of data, you're allowed to add one and then quarter it, like, like you may have learnt at GCSE. They'll accept either. Okay, anyway, a quarter of 50 is 12.5. So we want the 12 and a half value. Okay, now the key to frequency is helpful here because it shows that we've used up seven data points in the first group, but the 12 and a half value is going to lie in the second group. And because we've had seven already, it's going to be the five and a half value in the second row of data. OK, so to find it, we will do five and a half out of there are 10 values in that group. So we're just kind of past halfway in that group. And how wide is it? Um, so the group is five wide. So we want to be just over halfway through a group of width five. OK, and then we'd have to add it on to the start of the group and the start of the group is 45.5. OK, if you are a fan of diagrams, which, as you know, I am, this is like the second bar on the histogram. OK, and essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to split that so that we've got an area frequency of 5.5 on one side out of a total of 10 for the whole thing. OK, um, so there we go. And we know that the width of the group is 5. So we want to go 5.5 out of 10 of the way through that group and add it on to 45.5. OK, so I've done that on the calculator. OK, so 48.25 is what we should have. Third quartile is going to be three quarters of the way through 50. Uh, so that's going to be 
30, the 37.5th value. Okay, so if we look down, we use 32 values up to the end of the third group. So it's going to land in the fourth group. And if we've used 32 already, we've, oh, we're 5.5 again. The 5.5th value in the fourth row. Okay, so we want 5.5 out of this time. It's got a frequency of 12. The class widths are all 5, so we're multiplying by 5, and we add on to 55.5. Okay, we do that on the calculator. I've done that one right. We get 57.8. Okay, so finally we can work out our um, interquartile range. Now, although I'm only writing down uh, three significant figures for that one. Okay, I am going to use my calculator to make sure I'm using the exact value. So the interquartile range is 9.54.